Hey, in this episode, I want to test the thermostat in my Honda CX500. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. Okay, so in the last episode, we got the rear cover put back on the engine with the new stator inside and the new mechanical seal on the camshaft uh, water pump assembly. And so, but the engine is still out of the bike. But while the engine is out, I've got easy access to the thermostat, and I may as well uh, either replace it or just test it and make sure it's good. Uh, if, of course, if it works, there's no point in replacing it. So, let's find out if it works. So the thermostat on the CX500 resides you know, right here underneath this uh, cap. And when the engine is mounted in the bike, that is all tucked up under here and things get kind of tight in here. So it's a lot easier to get at now. There are three 10 millimeter bolts on top of here. So one, two, three bolts there. And then for this shroud, you've got one here and another one there, and then we'll get those off. I wanted to share um, something, not in the video, but down in the uh, description below. I'm gonna put a couple of links to some other YouTube videos um, the first one came from a viewer and I'll call him a new friend. Uh, he also purchased my book and uh, was so kind to post something about it in his um, Instagram feed. But his name, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, I, I've never heard it pronounced, but I believe his name is pronounced uh, Matthias Branca and he is in Germany. He is near um, the, the Alps, the German and Swiss Alps, and so he lives in a beautiful part of the world. Uh, from what I can tell, I, I, he seems to be a craftsman and uh, has done this just gorgeous work with bottling his own schnapps. I think they're schnapps. My apologies, uh, Matthias, if I have that wrong, but he sent me this link to a um, video about a steam train engine, but particularly it's uh, this snow removal, all steam powered um, snow blower essentially that goes in front of a steam engine. And so you got a steam powered snow blower being pushed by a steam engine through the Furka Pass in the Alps and uh, his grandfather was an engineer on that railway and you know obviously I like internal combustion engines and mechanics but as a young boy growing up in Fargo and uh, Fargo Moorhead kind of two towns there my father used to take me to something called the at that time it was called the Rolog uh, Steam Threshers Reunion now I think it's like the Western Steam Engine Reunion or something. I don't know what they call it, but it's a whole bunch of steam powered tractors, trains, uh, steam shovels, old steam technology. And uh, every year in, in the fall, these guys get together, guys and gals, get together and fire up these old machines and just give you an appreciation for how much work it was to accomplish some of these things that we do today with well other power sources that take a lot less time and maintenance but there's just a beauty in all of it so anyways if you're interested um, I've got a, a, the links below in the description to both that snow removal steam engine thing and uh, and then the steam threshers reunion in Rolog so now with that shroud pulled back and these three screws removed on the top of the thermostat housing, I see that we have 
another screw there and or bolt I should say and another one down where are you yeah, right underneath that hose there wire so got to get those off and then we should be able to get inside of that housing and any of you who are motorcyclists which I assume many of you are uh, are probably going to be familiar with the Furka Pass. It's one of the most beautiful roads. Not that I've ever been there, but um, you know, you see it on the internet. It's it's one of those bucket list places to ride. And I will ride it someday. I'll come visit Mateus, and we'll go riding. Anyways, thanks again, Mateus, for sending that. Just fantastic. Okay, so one and two. I've said this before in other videos, but I'll say it again. I so appreciate how Honda tends to use the same length bolts everywhere they can so that I really have to spend a lot less time thinking about which bolt goes where and keeping a record um, of you know which size and which hole. Uh, not so much the case with that Suzuki back there, Mr. Corton. Don't get me wrong, I love you, but you have all kinds of different size bolts in you. And so with all of that removed, then I can take this bracket out and I'll clean that up along with the bolts. And the top of this housing should pop off of here. I may have to get a little tool to pry a bit. They left just a little spot over in here. Let me show you this. Right in here, I could just get my screwdriver in and, and just pry it up a little bit. So without doing any damage to the housing. And inside here, there is an O-ring, which I will have to replace with a new one. And then you can just lift out the thermostat. And it's really very much like an automotive thermostat. In fact, it even looks the exact same size. So, let's figure out uh, what temperature this should be opening up at. So there's our thermostat. And cold it's closed. And if I look right here, I can see 82 degrees Celsius. That's about 179 point something degrees Fahrenheit, so call it 180. That means this thermostat will open up at 180 degrees. Well, let's see if it does. So this is simple enough. I've got some cold water in there and I, I grabbed a meat thermometer that's measured in Fahrenheit. So there's my 180. When this needle comes up around, this is the indicator side, that's the back side. So it'll have to come more than 180 degrees. Um, but when I reach 180, I should see that thermostat start to open up. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on UrbanMonkTV.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today.
getting there. So as I approach uh, 180, I'm at 160 now, keep an eye on this seam right here on the thermostat and you know up here. It should begin to open up as we get to 180. So in the engine, you can imagine you started your engine cold and now it's running and you want the coolant to come up to a certain temperature but not get to a point where it's boiling so but again you don't want to run with too cold an engine that's the purpose of the thermostat is it just kind of regulates not even kind of it does regulate the coolant temperature there I'm at 170 and climbing and there I'm at about 180 now this thermostat may not be this thermometer I'm saying may not be entirely uh, spot on but I'm reading 180 now on my cooking thermometer but I'm not seeing that the thermostat is open yet oh yes I am ever so slightly can you see that? let me zoom in here it has begun to open and that's enough for water to start flowing. So this is a good thermostat. So now coolant would be flowing in your engine going through the radiator and cooling it. That's what's not happening here. I'm just continuing to put heat to the water and of course that means it's just gonna boil the water. But uh, in your engine it would be cooling now and it should stay around that 180 degree mark. It might hover up and down a little bit but that's essentially how this works. So there it is, open, but as it's cooling, it's closing up. Very simple design. They've been this way for, gosh, a hundred years maybe, I'm guessing there, but... Still the way it's done in automotive and motorcycles today. So I've got a good thermostat that I can put back into the engine now. Um, one thing you do need to get if you're going to replace your thermostat is a, a new thermostat. They typically come with the O-ring to seal the thermostat housing. Um, if not, order it separately. And now in my case, since I have a good thermostat and I'm putting the old one back in, I'm going to need a new gasket, which unfortunately I don't have right now, so I just placed the order for it. Uh, it will come on its, on its way soon enough. These seven bolts are all it takes to get at the thermostat, and so these long ones go into um, here and the other side of this bracket to mount it. Be sure to get this grounding, or this hold down strap, it's not a ground, excuse me, it, uh, but it just holds this wire in place, so get that in there. So two of those long bolts go there. The other two hold this side of the shroud here and here. These guys, one and two. Then you have the two, I'll call them the medium length. I gotta clean these up before I put them back in, but essentially they are the ones that hold the thermostat housing down, but this bracket is in place first. There and there. And then the one short one just goes here into the bracket and all it does is hold the shroud here. Oop, dropped it. I'll find it. And that's it. One other thing I want to point out is the temperature sending unit, which is on the bottom side of this thermostat housing. That can be removed and tested also in a similar manner to the thermostat. A couple of thoughts. Torquing those bolts. The torque specification is not something that is given in the service manual for the thermostat housing or any of the bolts holding the bracket or that, uh, they call it an air dam, that shroud 
that mounts to that bracket? Um, you know, the answer is snug. Um, there are six millimeter bolts, so I'm going to say somewhere around four to seven uh, foot pounds. Figure out whatever that is in kilogram meters, uh, I forget, but not real tight, you know, uh, just good and snug. And when you're torquing down the two medium length bolts that hold the thermostat housing uh, together, you know, don't do one all the way and then the other. Do them somewhat evenly and bring that cover down uh, it, evenly. Let's put it that way. So that temperature sending unit, you can suspend that in water, not submerge it, but just suspend it with wires connected to a, a digital volt ohm meter, a multimeter like this, on the resistance or ohms setting and at varying temperatures it should have uh, varying amounts, a, a pretty specific amount of resistance at each temperature range. I'll throw up a chart here of what you want to achieve there. I'm not going to be testing mine uh, because I've ridden this bike and it was working fine before um, and it also is mounted in such a way that you can get at that piece while the engine's mounted on the bike. Frankly, I should mention you can do all of this while it's mounted on the bike. It's just a little bit more difficult. So, um, you know, for those of you who have come to this video with the engine in the bike and you want to test your thermostat, you can do this. It's just harder to see the bolts. Um, I've had the advantage of having the engine out. And by the way, taking the engine out isn't that difficult. I have a video on exactly how to do it. And while you're in there, you can do the double, triple bypass, whatever you'd like. Um, so that's it. That's testing your thermostat. And if you'd like, you can use a similar procedure to test the um, temperature sending unit for the temperature gauge up in the instruments. So I hope you enjoyed this journey into the cooling system a little bit on a Honda CX-500. Uh, just wanted to point out, if you like motorcycles and you like cafe racers, uh, check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton. It is a memoir of the build of my GS550 uh, cafe racer. It's a custom-built cafe racer uh, based on a 1978 Suzuki. And uh, it is also a memoir of becoming a fan of motorcycling as a young boy in 1970s and 1980s Fargo, North Dakota. So, unique perspective on the world. And uh, I've been told it's a good read. So, I think it is. Hey, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, you like the Honda CX500, or you like the Suzuki GS550, or my other uh, maintenance videos on the Suzuki V-Strom, or my moto adventure. I got a nice uh, moto camping event I did recently in Joshua Tree National Park. There's also a fun one on Death Valley National Park. If you like all of that, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to become an urban monk. And I wanted to say Thank you to Mateus Branca for sending the video of the steam snow thrower uh, for the railway there in the Furka Pass. I really enjoyed that. Um, links below, you guys, to not only that video, but also um, the Steam Threshers reunion in Rolog, Minnesota. And um, one other thing. When you're on your bike, and you see little kids walking around staring at you, uh, go ahead and wave to them because they think you're from outer space or that you're some kind of a science fiction character and it's really cool and you never know who the next motorcyclist is going to be and we do need people to keep entering into this industry and uh, to fuel um, sales of motorcycles. Thanks for watching.